I'm Jeremy Bourne, Gray Matters Brand Manager. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our presentation on Prophecy Operations Hub 2023. We're excited to see everybody this morning. Um, people are getting signed in, so I'm going to go ahead and just go over a few reminders for folks. If you've attended one of our Empower Up virtual events in the past, you know the score. But uh, for the new folks, use the comments tab to post questions for our presenters. We're here live, so take advantage of both of our speakers today um, because they, they're, they're here, they're ready for your questions, and I'm sure you're going to have some throughout both um, parts of today's uh, presentation. So just remember, post those questions, or if you just want to post a hi, hello, you can do that too. I can put a few on the screen too, just to let us know that you're out there, that you're paying attention, that you're psyched to learn about Ops Hub 2023, which I know everybody is because you have a lot of choices for virtual events, but you joined ours today, which is awesome. So we're glad to have you here. A couple of other things I want to let you know about. Um, Gray Matter offers all kinds of training. We have multi-day GE certified training in a bunch of different disciplines in iFix, in Ops Hub, in Historian, um, iFix Advanced, and iFix Fundamentals. Those are all posted to our website, graymattersystems.com. Under the training tab there, I have it on the screen so that you can find it easily. After today's presentation, if you know that you or your team are looking for that training, check it out. We actually have some in-person options there as well as virtual. They're totally comprehensive and um, we have some great trainers that, that do it all the time. So check those out and, and sign up. Uh, and they're, they're available throughout the year as well. Okay, so today's agenda, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna be kicking things off today with Amy Wooten, who is the Operations Hub Product Manager for GE Digital. Amy, welcome this morning. Hi. And then following Amy, uh, Greg Hazel from uh, Gray Matters Team, Senior Solutions Architect. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. So Amy is going to show us a bunch of uh, new capabilities on Ops Hub and go through kind of, um, you know, an entire list of things. And then Gray, Greg is going to do a screen share and deep dive and, and do some really practical um, demos on, on how to use things, how to build things. Um, so it's really cool, very popular way to, uh, to break down uh, the new features here and to get into Ops Hub. So I think I've covered everything we need to up front. Um, again, if you have questions, post them. Um, and um, when we have our transition points, um, we'll, uh, we'll ask them of Amy and Greg. So, so Amy, thanks for being here. The, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thanks, Jeremy. All right, folks, I am super excited to be here and to tell you a little bit about Operations Hub, uh, and especially with a focus on some of the new functionality and capabilities that are coming out in 2023. So as Jeremy mentioned, uh, I am the product manager for Operations Hub. Um, you know, I'll, I'll uh, leave my contact information as well. So you can reach out to Greg, you can reach out to myself, or the Gray Matter team, uh, if you have uh, questions afterwards. All right, so for, for folks who are, you know, sort of uh, starting to learn about Operations Hub, you might be wondering, you know, what's the big deal here? So, you know, often we find that our customers have, uh, you know, a variety of data, right? Um, they could be coming from uh, GE sources, right? GE Historian, uh, GE iFix, GE Simplicity, or, or plant applications, or they can be coming from third-party systems, right? Like SQL, they might have a third-party Historian or third-party MES. And this is often, you know, true for many, uh, mature, established industrial organizations, you know, as they are going from more paper and manual based processes to automated and digital processes, they're finding themselves with more and more data, right? And um, of course, you know, they don't, they often when they come to us, they don't want to think too much about, you know, the very specifics of the data, the protocols used, and, um, you know, some of the technology behind how to access it. They really want an easy way to take that data, aggregate it, and, you know, display it and use it in a way that provides value to their users. And this could be anyone from, you know, a plant manager um, who wants to have, you know, high level KPIs to understand how their site is performing, maybe against other sites, uh, all the way down to, say, operators, you know, who need, you know, real time data to quickly respond to events that happen on the plant floor. So um, this idea of, you know, being able to quickly pull in this data and to provide it to users, 
uh, and especially to make sure that workers are connected with each other and with the overall operational system is something that we've been talking about for a while now. Uh, and you may have heard the phrase connected worker. All right, when we, when we talk about that. Um, and so this is, of course, where Operations Hub comes into play, right? So we are a centralized environment to rapidly build industrial applications and design operations interfaces. And, you know, we want to be your, your single visualization platform. And that's whether, you know, you're using uh, GE sources for your data or a mix of sources, whether your data is on one site or across multiple sites or even up in the cloud, right? We want to be that single environment that you can use to very quickly build these operations operational interfaces for all of your different users. Now, I won't go too much into sort of the technical bits uh, today, um, but I will mention, you know, some of the key components for Ops Hub, again, if, in case you guys are, are new. So we do have uh, a series of data connectors, uh, as I mentioned. Um, so these will allow you to connect to the GE sources like iFix, Simplicity, Historian, Plant Apps, et cetera. All right, and there are also, you know, generic connectors, for example, a generic connect for OPC UA, REST, SQL, uh, in case you want to connect to external sources. We have what we call our uh, operations hub designer or our design environment. And that's really where you're going to be, you know, hooking up your data and, you know, pulling in your widgets and sort of building out your screens. And the result of that is a variety of uh, what we'll call end applications for your uh, various users and, and for your different personas. So, you know, often when, when I tell folks that we're a rapid application development uh, tool, they, you know, scratch their heads a little bit and like, okay, well, that sounds nice, but they really want some concrete examples of what that could look like. So I just have a, a couple peppered in here um, uh, just to give you an example of some of the types of screens you can build. All right. Uh, so in this case, right, this was a, a, a POC that we did for a a company, a Middle Eastern company that had a variety of power generation sites. All right. And so they wanted to have the manager be able to click on the different sites. And then as they click on the site, um, they can view some of the high level KPIs uh, about the production for that site, uh, both a historical view and the KPIs down below. Now, what's cool about this screen in particular is that it utilizes what we call uh, context-driven design, right? So you might notice as I click on the map or as I use the asset selector, it's actually varying uh, sometimes the number of KPIs or values that are shown here based on the type of site. So there's both like a, a traditional energy site and there's also like a wind farm site and they have different KPIs that they're looking at. So that's one of the cool things about Operations Hub that you can use some of the mechanisms that we have for creating these you know, context-driven displays, um, which end up um, really helping to focus your users on you know, bringing the data to them as they access it, instead of having to go in and search for bits of data for, you know, for example, for a particular site. All right, another example here, you know, similar in nature, but using a little bit of a different mechanism. All right, so here, instead of the map widget, we have actually what we call an interactive map. It's sort of an image overlaid with a, a status data that's rolled up. You can see the red and the green on the left-hand side. And as you click each site, you have the KPIs to the right-hand side update. And then, of course, you can go ahead and click if you want to have more details. All right, this is for a mining company. So as you click in for more details, you actually see the different um, uh, stages for, for their mining process. Um, and of course, you could click another site, right, and go ahead and dive in and see the uh, more details there. So these are very common uses of OPSA, right? So, you know, sort of having a high level view, maybe across multiple sites to understand how are things performing. And then especially if you see a problem child or an area that needs more attention, being able to drill in and get more details on demand. Very common for OPSA. All right, here is another uh, example screen. This is more targeted toward an operator. And uh, on the top, you can actually see a portion of a screen that was built in, I believe, Simplicity, all right? So if you have customers that are, um, you know, if, if you're, or if you are a customer that, is, you know, has iFix or Simplicity screens, and, you know, you want to still be able to use those screens uh, but you want them in the thin client, right? Or if you want to have them and augment them with additional data, say some additional gauges or, you know, pulling in REST data or pulling in SQL data, um, there are widgets in Operations Hub that you can use to sort of pull over those screens. There's more than one way you can do it. I won't get into the details here. There's both uh, the web space widget as well as something called the mimic widget. And depending on the type of screen you have, you can sort of you know, weigh the pros and cons of what approach you want to use. Um, but but uh, it does allow you to sort of extend the use of your existing screens. And for some folks who want to get started you know, with a thin client, 
um, it provides a, a more gradual transition. So you can have your operators still look at the screens that they are used to, right? They're, they're, uh, maybe their older HMI screens and start to bring in some of the new augmenting data um, all under one roof uh, in, in one UI. All right, another example of a screen, this one, you know, a little bit more focused for a process engineer. I don't think this was for a particular customer, um, but I think this, this was made, you know, for a particular demo. A uh, very common type of ops of screen, a little bit more focused on analysis, okay? So you can see across the top, there are some selectors, you know, for date time, some selectors for some tags, and you can hit submit, and you can actually pull up the different tags, right? You can see sort of historical values. You can see sort of where those tags fall all, um, sort of within expected ranges, if they were in the good or the green range, or if they were sort of out of spec, you know, and they are in the red range. Um, so uh, a really common uh, use case for OpsSub is to build sort of screens more focused on drilling in and exploring data. There are different widgets you can use here. We're using, you know, drop downs, inputs, date time pickers. There's also the trend widget, which we're going to talk about in a couple of slides uh, that is uh, very commonly used as well. Now, I just want to bring your attention to the area on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, this was actually made with an older version of OpSub, I want to say one or two versions back, and it essentially let you pull in an existing picture, I think this is a PNG, and sort of overlay live data on top of it, and you can sort of have the, the status, the, the colored status uh, on top of the picture. Starting with this 2023 release, which we're going to be talking about in this presentation, you are actually now able to make these process diagrams right inside OpSub. So a lot of new exciting capability that's coming out here in this uh, upcoming release. Yeah. All right. And just one final uh, example to sort of wrap this up. Um, this is a screen that was built um, for a plant apps customer. All right, they, uh, they, prophecy plant apps, uh, they already had, you know, a variety of uh, really great out of the box screens provided by plant apps, but they wanted to look at their data in a very specific way. They wanted to sort of drill in by line, by station, by equipment, um, and then uh, sort of uh, be able to drill down into their downtime uh, and, uh, statistics and, and um, be able to understand where the downtime is coming from. So this was a, a project that uh, we worked on with services um, and to be able to build them a, a UI that uh, helped them, you know, look at the same data that's coming from their existing GE product, but in a, in a little bit different way. Okay, so you know, moving on from the examples, uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about OpSub again, just sort of you know where we've been, where we're going. Um, again, for folks who are a little bit new to OpsHub, <laughs> uh, we are a little bit of a younger product. Um, I think our very first release was in 2019, and those early releases, uh, you know, were really focused at first on building out connectivity, right? So things like the REST connector, the SQL connector, OPC UA connector. And as we started, you know, building those up, we started shifting our focus and looking a little bit more into visualization. And so we leaned in really heavily to sort of build out our widget library. We have a variety of stock widgets that can work with any data sources, as well as, you know, very highly specialized widgets that are targeted toward a specific data source. And then, you know, as we started feeling like, okay, we've got a good set here, um, our focus has been shifting again, you know, toward ease of use. And I think this is the thing you're going to see, you know, obviously um, in the 2023 release, uh, as well as in future releases, um, we've really had a lot of feedback from different users around, you know, needs for being able to build screens quicker. Um, uh, time-saving measures when they build the screens, not having to repeat work, right? So uh, for 2022, 2023, and, and, and looking beyond, you're going to see a lot of enhancements to user journeys um, in addition to new capabilities. On top of that, um, you might notice here, um, you know, and uh, aside from looking at ease of use, we also took sort of a deeper look at some of our main use cases. Um, for example, historical analysis is a use case that we've supported even from the, the earliest um, earliest releases of OpsHub. We sort of took another look at that uh, because we're always getting requirements around trending and trend analysis and started to add more, uh, you know, capabilities into our, our trend card for that analysis. And then moving into 2023, um, our focus is, you know, sort of a deep dive on HMI. And of course, you'll uh, sort of see that reflected in the features that we'll be sharing with you uh, a little bit later. So uh, as I mentioned, again, historical analysis, big use case for OpsHub. Uh, you'll often hear us talking about like the trend card or the trend analysis 
a widget. Um, so a variety of different ways to use it. I probably won't go into too, too much detail here, but to mention, you know, it has all the sort of basics that you are looking for in, in trending. You can use it both uh, as a pre-configured trend, right? So if you want to have a couple trends already on the screen, or you can use it in a more ad hoc fashion where, you know, operators or, you know, engineers can come in and they can sort of browse for their specific data source, uh, whether it's historian, iFix, Simplicity, or you know a model, a model-based uh, sources, um, and then they can go ahead and, and plot them and sort of dig into to details. So um, we can probably do a follow-up if there's interest, you know, as more of a deep dive into trend. But it does include things like um, annotations, being able to have comments from multiple users and sort of look back and, and review the comments. We have things like spec limits, so you can see how your KPIs are performing. You can have you know quick statistics uh, at the click of a button, but you can also do what we call delta mode and sort of look at the the statistics between two different times. And then finally, we have what we call a favorites, which is uh, basically a way that you can save the configuration for your trend, right? So let's say you're like knee deep and you're you know doing all your analysis and you're like, okay, this is perfect. I've captured this event that happened and here are the important KPIs and I want to save this so that I can share it with someone else or I can refer back to it. You can go ahead and save your, your ad hoc session as a new favorite. And then later on, you can return to it or someone else can re return to it. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, 2022, um, you know, we had two releases that were really focused on trend analysis. Again, I probably won't go too deep, too deep into there. Please, you know, feel free to reach out or look at our, or look at our docs or ask for a, a deep dive. Um, but we did introduce a variety of new functionality, including, you know, split Y axes or stacked Y axes. Lots of folks have been asking, you know, to very quickly go from a, a full trend to splitting it out um, or be able to quickly flip to a table view so that you can see all the values for your trend uh, and uh, tag uh, trend by tag query as well. So if you have, you know, all your trend data and then you want to say, okay, just show me the times where, you know, show me the time, the pressure when the temperature was greater than 37, for example, uh, it will hide and show areas of the graph that, um, sorry, the chart that uh, meet your condition. So uh, again, I encourage you to take a look both at our documentation um, or, or reach out to us if you have any questions here or uh, play around with OpSub to, to learn more. Okay, so now we finally get to the meat of it. Uh, uh, so as I mentioned, for uh, uh, Operations Hub 2023, we really focused on um, our entry into uh, being a thin client or a lightweight HMI uh, client. All right, so to be able to support that, we've had a variety of different features. Um, number one, obviously, <laughs> graphics editor. Anyone who's built HMIs know that you know, you're know you sort of expecting your traditional view with process diagrams, with basic shapes like circles and, and squares and line connectors, right? And, and you know animations. So all of that is built into what we call the graphics editor. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, out of the box graphics. So uh, we do have a small set of graphics to kind of kickstart your development. Um, right now we're keeping it small and sort of um, hearing, waiting to hear feedback from folks. So if you find, you know, if you take a look at our, our library and find that, hey, there are additional graphics that you're interested in, you know, please reach out. Uh, we're always trying to get some feedback on that. Uh, Canvas and Flex layouts. All right. So uh, Operations Hub already had, I'll say, some uh, layout type with which was more oriented toward grid. All right. So you could basically sort of divvy up your space into columns and rows and put your widgets right in, into different slots. Uh, to support the HMI use case, we've had to introduce, you know, especially the Canvas layout, which is really more of an experience that you would have when building, you know, a, tr a traditional HMI. So, you know, being able to drag and drop and exactly position, you know, down to the pixel where you want uh, a portion of the graphic to go um, and, and you know being able to define placement and sizes in terms of pixels and percents instead of sort of flopping them into a, a spot on a grid so definitely a, a major enhancement for us to support that layout type uh, flex as well is another layout type it's a bit more uh or uh what's it called uh, responsive oriented so if you're trying to build screens that you know can um, display optimally on, uh, you know, different form factors or different devices. Um, that's definitely a layout to take a look at. And then finally, I'll mention uh, we do have a new designer experience. So, um, so far we have, you know, um, all the previous releases leading up to this, we have our operations hub designer, but, um, you know, sort of going forward, um, many of the configuration uh, elements of our different our products in our portfolio are moving into an area called Config Hub. Uh, and so Operations Hub is sort of joining that effort as well. 
All right, so I'll do just a little bit of a, of a deep dive into here, and then I promise I'll stop talking and we'll, we'll turn over to Greg for some live demos, all right? Uh, so uh, just to continue on that last point for the designer experience, right? Um, you know, as a portfolio of products, I feel like we have received quite a bit of feedback that uh, folks sometimes feel that our products can be, you know, the feeling is that they're a little bit siloed. You know, you do your configuration in one product and then you do another configuration, another product, and you have to open up another product. And so, uh, you know, as a portfolio, we've sort of taken that feedback and a major effort across all of our products is to try to move our configuration into a centralized place. So when you're coming in, right, you can, you know, come into this configuration hub area, you can set up your tags and IFIX, you can, you know, do your configuration for historian and you can do your model and go into OpsHub and build a screen against the model or against your tags all in one, um, one UI, all right? So this is you know, something that you're going to see more and more of, you know, I, I think IFIX, uh, IFIX OpsHub, um, plant applications, uh, who else? I'm sure I'm forgetting, but most of the products have already made an entry or they're about to make an entry into Config Hub. So you'll definitely see more, uh, more effort going this uh, direction in the future. I'll also just mention, of course, that um, Operations Hub has been using the common authentication um, for several years now called a prophecy authentication um, that is used by many of our products. So, you know, when you have a user that is in IFIX or in Historian and they're using sort of the, the web tools for those products, um, you can have that same user use Operations Hub and you don't have to have sort of multiple user stores. All right, so just uh, taking a look here, this is a, a quick little GIF, GIF, <laughs> uh, animation, whatever. Uh, so here we are logging into Configuration Hub, okay? Um, and you can see on the left-hand side, we have a couple of different entries, right? At the top there, uh, we have Prophecy Authentication. Like I mentioned, it's the common authentication for many of our products. Um, so you can come in here, you can you know create your users and groups. Uh, you can connect to Active Directory, for example, or SAML providers and uh, do your security uh, and authentication. We also have an entry here for uh, IFIX, right? So you can see that um, you can look at your model, you can look at your tag database, right? Um, all your different configuration is starting to move into this area too for, for IFIX. And then, of course, uh, we have Operations Hub, which you'll see here down at the bottom, okay? Or was it at the top? Uh, and then there's also, there's sort of two ways to enter uh, OPSA. One is on the left-hand side through the navigation, and the other is through this tool, uh, this paintbrush, which we call designer mode. Um, and so when you come in here, you'll see your list of applications. And really an application you can think of as just a list of screens or a list of pages um, that are sort of bundled together into one app, okay? All right. So moving on, let's say we come in, we have our list of apps and we want to go ahead and edit a page, okay? Um, you can see on the left-hand side under visuals, all right, these are the visual elements that are available to add to the page. So there are obviously a couple of different categories, some are more display oriented, uh, some are more general purpose, okay? We have things like the favorite organizer. Um, uh, some are more HMI focused, all right? So things like the alarm card, things like the mimic card and the web space card. Uh, we have our out of the box graphics, as I mentioned, okay? Um, and we also have a variety of input widgets. So absolutely, you know, OpsHub can display data, and we do that, I think, hopefully quite well, um, but you can also do uh, entry as well. We're not just uh, read-only. You can absolutely build interfaces for data entry um, or for, you know, building interactive pages. Uh, if we go just one tab to the side, you'll see this is the, the data area, and really this is where you have all the data that you can add to the page. So you can add visualizations to the page. You can also add data to the page. Right. And as I mentioned, we support a variety of different data types. Um, here you can see we're sort of looking at um, IFIX, we're looking at Historian, um, and those support what we call our, our drag and drop journey. Right. You can sort of drag your source and drop it onto your widget. Uh, we, we do, of course, support uh, SQL, we support REST, we support third party OBCOA, MQTT as well. So, a variety of different sources uh, that you can add to your page. Now, once you've added your data to the page, you'll see here, right, we have a couple of current value queries, we have a historical query. As you click on the query to the left-hand side, you see all the details to the right. I'll just mention that this recording was taken, I want to say, back in December. So some of the UI has been refined a little bit, but hopefully you get the idea here that, you know, 
you can have data and visuals that you can add to the page. And then you have data and visuals that you have already added to the page. And those are sort of listed for the page data or they are in a tree view for the page visuals. And you can actually go ahead and select items right from the tree, all right? Or you can select them by clicking uh, directly onto the, the page itself. All right, uh, and of course the, the page area, this is sort of the page layout area. And then the right-hand uh, area is called the details panel. And that's uh, based on whatever you have selected, it shows the details on the right-hand side. Okay, so moving on to the next feature, as I mentioned, um, one of the big uh, uh, enhancements that we had for Operations Hub was the ability to create and animate custom graphics. So our graphics are SVG based, all right? And the nice thing about that is that they are resolution independent, which means that they can scale up and scale down, you know, without losing any image quality. Now, of course, we do provide you this editor. It's got all the basics for graphics creation, right? You have basic shapes, you have, you know, ability to change colors, you can draw lines, et cetera. Um, but we also let you, you know, pull in SVGs that were created externally, right? So if you have another editor of choice, right? If you have folks, you know, that have illustrator competency, right? For example, um, or if, they, if they're using, um, I myself have been using PowerPoint lately because you can actually export your, your shapes as, a, as an SVG. Um, if there is your, your favorite SVG tool, you can go ahead and, you know, take those SVGs and pull them and add them right into Operations Hub in this graphics editor. And we will let you hang animations um, off those graphics uh, and define them, you know, right in our editor. So I think that's great because um, obviously if you have folks who are already trained on other tools, uh, that's great. You can go ahead and, and have them continue to use those. Um, also, if you already have SVG artifacts from maybe previous projects, or sometimes you can, you know, purchase a whole pack of industrial SVGs, for example. Um, and I think even iFix uh, does support uh, exporting to SVG as well. Um, so, you know, if you have SVGs, you can go ahead and, and bring them in and uh, take make use of those artifacts. Uh, down below are is just a couple screenshots of the out of the box um, graphics that we have. As I mentioned, it's it's a rather small set. I want to say it's like five to seven. These should look familiar if you have iFix. They are based off of the uh, high performance HMI um, graphic set. So things like pumps and valves and tanks, uh, as well as uh, various gauges. Um, and, and like I mentioned, we're sort of waiting to hear back from folks, you know, are these useful? Are most people going to make their own custom graphics anyways? So we shouldn't invest in a very heavy library. So, you know, let us know if you start to build with Offsub, uh, let us know what you're looking for. Um, we, you know, if we hear enough that, that folks are looking for a, a, you know, rich library, then uh, we'll go ahead and, and put, you know, more investment in that area. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go through here. Uh, again, just keep in mind, this was a couple of weeks ago that we took this, the uh, recording. Uh, here we're looking at the high performance graphics that come out of the box. And one of the nice things you can do is you can actually duplicate you know, the out of the box graphics. And so when you have that, right, you can go back in, you can look at your copy of the graphic, all right, and you can edit it. So you can actually see how the graphic was structured and you can use it as an example to understand how to do, you know, data binding, for example, or how to define an animation on a graphic. So it's a good sort of uh, learning and exploratory experience, uh, even if you end up, you know, doing your, your own custom thing uh, afterwards. So here we're just defining um, basically a data value, all right? And uh, I think, yep, he's gonna delete an animation and we're gonna add a new animation, all right? And we're going to refer to that data point. Uh-huh, and we're gonna say, all right, I'm gonna have my fill direction and I'm going to, to reference the min and the max for that data point, all right? So this is what we call, you know, the, gra the custom uh, graphic creation, okay? And sort of defining the animations. The second half of the journey is really about using the graphics. So in this case, we're gonna come into a pre-existing page, all right? And uh, this is uh, one of our TPMs had already sort of created a portion of a graphic somewhere else, all right? And then they have this new valve, which they've just created, all right? And so you can, you know, drag and drop those SVGs with those animations, you know, directly into the page. You can go ahead and add, you know, line connectors and, and um, connect your different graphics or, or overlay the graphics on top of the lines um, and sort of build out your diagram. 
Okay, so uh, hopefully that makes sense. You have sort of a, a two part, right? Um, one is defining the graphics, all right? And so do, you wanna build out your own library of custom graphics or, you know, have our out of the box uh, library of graphics. And then number two is actually, you know, building out your page and then using the graphics that you've previously defined and sort of binding the animations and, and doing the uh, detailed configuration for that. Okay, moving on. Um, as I mentioned, we've had to extend OpsHub uh, to support a couple of different layouts. Uh, coordinate layout is, you know, by far the um, the heaviest emphasis. Um, so for this, it's just like you would expect from an HMI editor, right? Or a very uh, a sim a experience that's similar to you would have in in PowerPoint or you know other graphical editing tools too. So you can you know have graphics, you can stretch them. They have you know the the grippies and the handlebars. Um, you can resize, you can rotate. Um, along the top, you have uh, different tools for working with the elements on the page, you know, whether they're graphics or whether they're other types of widgets. Um, so things like align, things like distribute, flipping, et cetera. Um, you, you know, you have all of that uh, for this coordinate layout. Um, so again, you know, if you have played with OPSA before, which I'm not sure how, how many folks have, you'll probably know that this is, you know, quite the departure from our uh, previous layout. All right, so this is sort of a new layout that we're, you know, adding on top um, that, you know, is a little bit more freeform, a little bit more flexible to support uh, HMI use cases. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I think you've probably seen this even as part of the, the graphics uh, example, but here we're just going to, you know, go ahead and add a page, right? And, um, you know, in the background of the page, there's actually a grid. And on top of the grid, you can have one or more cards. So we're just uh, resizing this card, okay? Uh, and then once you have your card, okay, you can sort of say, hey, I want the card to fit the whole screen. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some widgets on top of the card, okay? So in this case, we're adding a couple of gauge widgets. Yep, and add another one here. Yep, I think we had three or four. And then uh, you can you can obviously see how you're able to, to drag and drop. I don't know if we did an example. I think we did an example of, of resizing as well. Uh, and of course, you can you can rotate uh, as needed. Okay, so here uh, you do have things like multi-select. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and grab all of those and say, hey, distribute horizontally, no problem, and align uh, you know vertically so that they you know look a little bit nicer. And then here we're just going to go ahead and it looks like we're going to grab a chart. Yes, so we're going to go ahead and grab a chart. All right, sorry folks. It, there was a previous bug about the gauges disappearing that has now been fixed. So please don't take home that the gauges are disappearing. They will be fully functional in the release. Yeah. Okay. And so you can see here, right, that um, on the right-hand side, we're actually using that details panel. You can uh, enter the sizes for things when you're using the coordinate layout in either uh, pixels or percent. Yeah. And probably Greg will show you a couple of different examples as part of, of app building uh, shortly. Okay. And you know, we probably don't have to go too deep into this, but this is just to mention that, you know, your page can have multiple cards. So the previous example had just one card, but you could build out, you know, sort of a, a dashboard looking page that had, you know, uh, you know, an, an HMI looking region in it. You can have some gauges in it. You can have some trends in it all sort of in their different uh, cards or different areas. So um, really, there's more than one way usually to, to build the kind of page that you want. There are, you know, some things to think about. And, you know, maybe someday we can do a little bit of a deep dive on, you know, page building mechanics, or you can, you know, look at the, the training that's offered by uh, Gray Matter, right? So there are some differences if you choose to use one card um, versus uh, multiple cards. The, car the grid structure itself has some rules around how um, it responds to changes uh, in the browser, right? So when your browser gets smaller or, or wider, so there might be some benefits or, or trade-offs even uh, between, you know, putting everything on one card versus many. So, um, yep, but just to show you that there's multiple ways to skin a cat here. Yep. Okay, and then, you know, last we have this flex layout. So I will mention that Flex is a little bit more of a more advanced uh, layout option, okay? And in particular, this layout is um, really good for folks who want to build pages that respond um, to, um, you know, different form factors or different different devices, all right? So for coordinate, 
right? You are you know, both defining the size of the widget and you're also saying, hey, I want this exact position. You're saying, you know, my, my X and Y are here or my offset from the left or offset from the right are here. With flex layout, yes, you do define, you know, a height and a width, um, but the position is often managed directly by that layout, right? So it will take care of the spacing. It can have sort of all the items cling to one side. It can divide up the available space so that all the elements have an equal amount of space. It can have, you know, manage the space between the elements or give each element more room to grow and get bigger, right? Depending on your screen size, if it's small or if it's large. And you can even do things like, you know, um, when my screen gets bigger or smaller, I want to have elements, you know, uh, wrap onto the next line as well. So we can go ahead and, and take a couple of, of um, a look at a couple of examples here, right? So in this case, we're going to add, I think, a couple of yep, um, bar gauges. And you can see they're just sort of, you know, filling out the space. And then as you add more, right, that layout is automatically resizing the elements that are there, all right, to make them smaller. So you don't have to worry about resizing it. You just know, hey, I have a series of, of gauges, whether they're vertical, whether they're horizontal, and that layout will manage the space. And if you use this screen, and if it's going to be, you know, on a, a tablet or or on a big screen, right, um, those uh, elements are going to resize, you know, based on the the rules in that container, right? So here we'll look at wrap. Okay, just same layout. It's still the flex layout, but a slightly different configuration. Okay, so in this case, the elements don't resize. They don't get you know, larger and smaller. But what happens is when they run out of room, they go ahead and they wrap onto the next line. Okay. So you can see here, we're sort of starting to fill out the space and you didn't have to specify, you know, the exact position of each of those elements. You just, you know, add them to the container and the container knows where to put it because it's managing the position there. And then if you kind hey, of want to, oh yeah, go for it. Hey, Amy, do you want to take a couple of quick questions and then we'll, we'll oh, move over to yeah. Greg? Just yes, to make uh, you know, good use of the question time we have. So, yeah, um, yeah okay, all right. I, I think these are a couple of good ones here. So, Mac is asking, can you do a spark line or graph with underfill? Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, underfill. Okay, underfill being fill in the area underneath the spark line. I'm guessing that's what. It, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So we definitely have a spark line. I will have to check if it exposes an underfill property. Uh, maybe we can have that as a follow up. Yeah. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure it does, but I can definitely follow up and get you the real answer. Yeah. Yeah. And any questions that we don't get to today, we can definitely follow up and 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 talk more about. Um, Jason awesome. was curious. Can you draw your own objects? Draw your own objects. So so you can absolutely make your own custom graphics. Yes. If that's mm -hmm. what you're talking about, like, you know, graphics like my own pump, my own tank, my own, you know, reactor. Absolutely. You can do that. In addition, right, there are those graphics. These elements that you see here, these are not um, graphics. These are a different kind. These are just widgets. There's a graphic mm -hmm. widget and there's like other widgets. Okay, so you can actually make these as well. So let's say that you're using a library like HighCharts or DevExtreme and they have, I don't know, like a, a hierarchy selector, a tree selector, or a tree map, or some widget that you want and we don't have. We do have a plugin SDK, so you can also add your own widgets um, if you have some folks who can do a little bit of web development. Um, so yes, you can both do graphics, custom graphics creation, no problem. And uh, if you want to extend OPSA by having your own widgets, you can do that as well. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, Amy, you're able to stick around. So if we have some more questions at the end, right, we can go through yes. those. And uh, Greg, if you want to share your screen, we'll bring you up on stage here. And, awesome. And uh, let's try. Amy, thank you so much for the presentation. All good. Appreciate it. All right, Greg, uh, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. And thank you, Amy. Um, all right. So if you've seen our uh, been following our Empower Ups in the uh, this year, we've had the Empower Up for iFix 2023. And some of these displays that you see here today might look sim similar. So um, due to the um, uh, vector graphics capability that uh, Amy and team has been adding to the product, uh, we built some displays that might look similar to SCADA type graphics. So what you see here on my screen is you see a mix of SCADA type graphics, these the little pump icons that are actually part of the product, as well as uh, event charts. So these are widgets that can uh, 
uh, display uh, events, and these events could be a product change, they could be steps of a process, or they could be as simple as, hey, is my distribution pump running or not? And very quickly, the user be able to see what my pumps have been doing over uh, the last uh, period of time. So those are uh, a mix of SCADA type widgets and native widgets that we traditionally have been using as more of a dashboarding type thing in Operations Hub. So what I'm gonna do here is we'll just navigate to the main screen and now you see a um, more of a SCADA type graphics where I can continue to mix uh, pumps and valves and tanks along with things like spark line widgets, graph widgets, donut charts, uh, bullet charts. Uh, so we're using these out of the box widgets with either native or custom based uh, vector based graphics. You also see that I have an alarm object at the bottom. And so I can look at that either as a alarm object, object on my screen, or I can go in and make a full screen uh, alarm display, very similar that you use in a SCADA system. Uh, with that, you have the capability of a lot of the out-of-the-box features. So part of the operations hub and the environment we're trying to provide is not having to build everything from scratch. And if you wanted to filter alarms based on a severity or something of that nature, I could certainly go in there and just pick this configuration. There's nothing to build here. You plop the, uh, the widget on display and you're good to go. So uh, in addition to that, we've had our traditional uh, um, analysis chart. So this is where we're able to put our analysis chart on our display. It has all sorts of capabilities, including uh, adding notes to your chart. So if you want to add a note or do ad hoc configuration, uh, maybe add a pen to your note, you can cer certainly do that just by selecting a um, a tag either by a model or by the uh, historian tag browser and add it to your chart. So as I do that, if I wanna plot a new point, I simply just check box it here, add it to my chart. If I wanna remove a point, I can just do that as well just by clicking over here. So you notice I'm in the runtime environment doing this. The idea with the whole uh, analysis chart is to have it you empower the end user, not have to have a technical person build one and hard code a chart for you. Uh, as I said, there is the notes capability where you can add a note to your chart as well. Well, so you can stick your new note in there and save it as part of your chart. And uh, anyone can, uh, it has access to notes, would be able to see that note just by clicking on it and drilling into notes. You can also put multiple notes on the uh, same chart. So this charts continuously be enhanced. The newer versions of support stacked axes and things of that nature. Um, so continuously to be enhanced over the period of time as well as doing things like putting uh, multiple cursors on here and looking at the delta of values. So all that is um, <clears throat> uh, available mixing standard widgets with graphical widgets. So uh, with that, let me go into, you know, how was this stuff built? How, do, how would I get into the configuration environment? I'm going to just hit my favorites over here, and I'm going to go into Configuration Hub. <clears throat> As Amy says, we've built uh, the configuration to build a single uh, development environment to monitor and build all aspects of the GE portfolio. So I can monitor my security. I can monitor my historian. If you were here with us last month, you were looking at our SCADA capability where we could go in and build our tag database. We could build our uh, equipment model all through uh, Configuration Hub. Uh, the team for Operations Hub is also built in Operations Hub, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So as I go into Operations Hub, I can select the applications, and now you'll see the application that I just demonstrated in the runtime environment, my distribution station, my pump cycles, my alarms, my analysis, and so on. Um, as you're in this environment, you'll get a series of tabs, so you can move between uh, different aspects of Configuration Hub. 
when you're working specifically in the um, operations hub environment, we're going to go into designer. We have the paintbrush icon up here in the top left. And I'm going to say yes to that. And it's going to move me into a full design environment for operations hub. In that environment, you'll see that I now have my application and a series of pages underneath. What we're going to do here is we're going to add a new page. So simply right click, add a new page. And this is going to be my uh, storage tank. And we're going to add our new page for our storage tank. As you see on the left-hand side is our widgets. So we have our widgets categorized by type, charts, displays, general, HMI, inputs, layouts, et cetera. Um, and this library is conti continually being built out. So um, as ideas come in and requirements come in, these uh, widgets uh, um, are enhanced and uh, in each release. As Amy says, occasionally, if need be, uh, a widget can be built by um, some uh, development folks. So uh, with that, I'm going to grab my standard art gauge as we used in the past, drop it on the screen, and um, save that display. And uh, now with that display, I can go under my data tab and I'm able to see my uh, north distribution tank. And with that distribution tank, I can expand that and select my tank level. And so this is a historian tag that I can drag and drop it onto my display. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and save that, and then we're going to go over and launch that. Okay, so we just built a page, and now we're launching our page with our simple donut chart. Okay, with the time we have remaining, we're going to add a couple more things. We're going to go into uh, our operations hub. We'll go back into visuals, and as Amy said, we have the... Uh, HMI graphics that are part of the product. I'll just drag that onto the page. And as you see, when I do that, there's a series of properties and details that are exposed on the left, on the right hand side. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bind that to a data source. So in our tag browser, we're going to bind that to an iFix value. So the iFix value is going to give me a list of my iFix tags here in the list. So what we're going to do is just look through our tag list and select our pump status screen, our pump status uh, tag, and expand that and i'm going to grab the value of that and we'll drop that right onto our pump okay and once that's done we can again save it and uh, go into our environment i like to use this tube tab environment so i have a configuration environment and another tab with the uh, storage tank or the or the uh, runtime environment so a simple refresh will put my pump back on the screen and you'll see that it probably will turn on and off here throughout the uh, display as I just have the value toggling uh, in the background. As we um, go through that, uh, as Amy said, we have the uh, environment where we can go back into our visuals. And down here at the bottom, we can build our own graphics. So if I want to add a new tank or a new graphic, right click, add new graphic, and it allows me to create a new graphical object. If you're um, familiar with SCADA systems, dynamos and symbols and all sorts of stuff, different uh, packages call it, these would be uh, similar to that type of deal. So we'll call this our H2O uh, tank here and add our graphic, okay? Once that graphic is there, I'm gonna hit and edit the graphic. 
notice that's bringing me into a new designer, right? It's bringing me into a new designer to build out these F SVG graphics. So I'm going to expand that and uh, just zoom in. So I'm building it at a 400% uh, ratio. Uh, once that's done, I can go in and select my different uh, I, my different tools. So I'm just going to plop down a rectangle in here, and there is the beginning of my tank. Uh, don't really want a red tank, so we're going to pick a color for that tank. Uh, as well as maybe I don't want the edge on it, remove the edge, and I can also uh, maybe make it rotate it here and. Uh, Put different, uh, change different uh, aspects of this tank the way you, you want it to to look and feel. Okay, and down here you'll see maybe we'll make it uh, more tank-like. We'll make some rounded edges, and you're good to go. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we'll add another rectangle, and we'll plop that down, and this will outline our um, vertical fill. And uh, let's go put a piece of text on here just for uh, grins. So this will be our this will be our storage tank. And of course, uh, maybe we'll make that a little smaller here. And we can also size it manually with just by dragging it around. Um, with that done, we're going to um, add a, another value here, and we're just going to call this uh, value. And why I did that is as I click on it, I can go and change the font of it, change the size, uh, change the color and whatnot, and move that around. So I'm building out my custom graphic. Once that's done, simple enough, I select the part of the graphic that I want to animate, right click it and add an animation. I'm going to add a fill animation here. And I'm also going to go to my value animation and I'm going to right click and hit add data link animation. So good to go here. I'm going to save that graphic and allows me to build out that uh, graphical object here in just a few minutes. Uh, let's go back into our designer and go back into our graphics and you'll see I now have my HTO tank available. I'm going to drag that onto my page. We'll go ahead and size that. And what you see on the right is my properties are now exposed. It built the, the animated vector graphic and attached these properties and, and animations to that object. Uh, from there, all we need to do is go back into our page data and select our values. So, Let's go ahead and select our uh, tank level tag. So we need a, a tank level. We're going to select the value of it. This data is coming in directly from OPC UA uh, to the um, element. So I'm going to tag and drop that onto my tank. And you'll see that it bound to my tank by the message up top. And I'll just save that. So let's go into our... Uh, graphic, and then refresh, and uh, lo and behold, I have a tank, and with a value changing, and all within uh, just a few minutes. Again, if you want to make changes to this, the property are exposed. If I don't like that color blue, I can pick another color blue or change different aspects. My engineering units, um, you can add all sorts of things to the uh, tanks and animated objects. So again, just uh, all the changes, working in a two-tab environment, simply refresh the running tab, and uh, you'll see your changes where I have a uh, kinder color blue for this storage tank. So pre-built um, um, widgets that are part of Operations Hub. We have our new vector grace graphics with animations that are part of the product, as well as building your own uh, vector graphics with animations. So a lot has changed with Operations Hub uh, over the last year. Uh, excited to work with the product.